Coming up on Fulton Today, the Fulton County Police Department strengthens its arsenal. We'll take a look at the new patrol cars. And the new chief judge of Superior Court speaks out about the priorities for the justice system. Fulton Today is next. From the Government Center in downtown Atlanta, you're watching Fulton Today with Shania Chavis. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shania Chavis. The Fulton County Police Department has nearly two dozen new cars now in South Fulton County. Known as the Interceptors, the new high-tech and fuel-efficient crime stoppers are made possible thanks in part to taxpayers and grant funds. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega has our story. The 22 new police interceptors are safer, more fuel efficient, and will save the county money by avoiding costly repairs. It will also keep the officers on the road a longer time versus pulling out of service, uh, going for vehicle maintenance repairs. The 2014 models get 17 miles per gallon in the city, as opposed to the old Crown Victorias, which had 14. When you're rolling a full fleet of cars, uh, which is 24 seven, um, it really adds up to a lot of savings for Fulton County. In order to save money, some of the equipment that can still be used is being transferred from the old Crown Victorias to the new Interceptors. And as soon as these new cars are equipped, they're assigned to an officer and rolled out onto the street. The safety features include a steel crossbar under the car that can withstand a rear crash of up to 75 miles per hour, four-wheel drive, which means better handling around tight corners, and the officer's radio is now closer to reach. Plus, a ProGuard backseat means sanitizing will be a lot quicker for the officers. We can hose them out, uh, close the uh, window to the back seat, and actually hose them out if we need to in case there are any type of bodily fluids, uh, anything that's in the rear, left in the rear of the seat. These new patrol cars are the latest safety upgrades for Fulton County Police. Last year, the county purchased two new T3 patrollers and upgraded its helicopter with new features. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Priscilla Ortega. Thank you very much, Priscilla. Meanwhile, DeKalb County officials tapped one of Fulton County's own to lead its fire department. That meant Fulton County had to say farewell. Right now, uh, Darnell Fulham is going to probably be answering his last bell for the fire department at Fulton County. After 26 years of service, Deputy Fire Chief Darnell Fulham is retiring. The Board of Commissioners acknowledged his service to the county with a proclamation. We're going to miss you, Dean. Take care. It has been an honor to serve the county for the last 26 years. The fire department also hosted a reception in his honor. Fulham's years of training and dedication to the profession has paid off. The chief is the latest in a long list of county professionals who have been hired for top ranking fire positions around the country. Fulham will be busy as DeKalb County's chief. They have 26 fire stations and more than 800 firefighters. Fulton's top executives evaluate the county's performance during the last winter weather event. The county manager immediately mobilized his emergency, human services, facilities, and communications professionals to prep for the storm. Arts, libraries, parks, and rec facilities all closed early as the storm approached, and county services were modified during the wintry mix. The Atlanta Fulton Emergency Management Agency director is developing an official evaluation of both storms for the Board of Commissioners. Well, there is a new chief judge presiding over the Atlanta Judicial Circuit. Superior Court held a change in gavel ceremony to mark the change in leadership on the bench. Judge Gail Tucson was elected after Chief Judge Cynthia Wright announced her retirement. Well, I'm really excited for Judge Tucson for the opportunity for the court to move forward. Uh, judge Tucson, of course, takes up the mantle from another great chief judge, and that was Judge Wright. Judge Wright's done so much during her four-year tenure to move our court forward, to make it more accessible, to make it more transparent. And I'm, I, as a member of the bench, am committed to helping Judge Tucson in continuing that mission of moving our court forward to better serve the citizens of Fulton County. Judge Tucson served as the first deputy chief judge of the court last year. She has more than 25 years of experience on the bench. 
The new chief judge joins us now to talk about her new role. Judge, congratulations and good to see you on Fulton today. Hi, Shania. Thanks for having me. Well, first things first, let's talk about your priorities as chief judge. Access to justice is very important to me and to our community. So I want to make sure that we are employing the best practices to make sure that our courthouse and our services are available to all citizens. Um, I would be focusing on bilingualism, um, the signage in the courthouse, um, and all of the, the barriers that exist that we may not be sensitive to for individuals who are not schooled in the law. And now can you speak to some of the challenges of the position? I think one of the challenges is trying to um, bring together all of the different stakeholders and justice partners um, around the table and keep everyone focused on our common goals of providing customer service and making justice um, accessible to everyone. I think another challenge and one of my priorities is to focus on the mental health community and I'm very interested in figuring out um, better ways for our court system to respond to the needs of those that are mentally ill and this is not just a, a legal or judicial issue it's a community at large issue and so what I'm planning to do first is to convene a task force of all the necessary professionals court officials and lay leaders in the community to come together and start brainstorming um, some solutions so that we can um, provide the services that these individuals need um, provide them with the necessary housing um, education jobs and treatment um, ultimately so that they're not just kind of out on the street um, posing a danger to themselves as well as to their fellow citizens. And Judge, you joined the bench back in 1995. Um, what are some of the changes that you've already seen over the years? Our court itself, the bench has grown. Um, we now have 20 judges, um, all elected. Um, we have um, more diversity among our judges in terms of age, backgrounds, and and that's a challenge because we all have the common goal of providing public service, but we have different backgrounds and we need to work together. And finally, before you go, let me get your last thoughts. Simply that the courthouse um, is belongs to the public. It's not my courthouse. It's not the, um, you know, the property of my 19 colleagues. It is, it's a public community institution. The doors are always open. We encourage citizens that may be watching to just come in and, and see what the process is. Well, the new Superior Court Chief Judge Gail Tucson, again, congratulations, and thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Um, I've enjoyed talking to you, and I look forward to being invited again. Take care. Meanwhile, Superior Court is expanding its reach to the public with its new Speakers Bureau. Citizens can request judges, administrators, or staff members to talk to schools, businesses, and organizations about law-related topics. The Office of Court Administration launched the Speakers Bureau initiative for 2014. Well, in today's world, you hear a lot about trust and transparency as it relates to government. Well, the Fulton County Superior Court continuously tried to find ways to build trust and bond with our community. The Speakers Bureau, as part of the communication, Community Engagement Initiative, is one of the ways to do that. As the busiest trial court in the state, Superior Court has more than 20 judges. Log on to Superior Court's website to get more information on scheduling a speaker. And the Fulton County District Attorney is recognized for his service and leadership. The King Association for Social Change presented Paul Howard with its Phoenix Award for Leadership in Tifton, Georgia. Organizers cited his work as a humanitarian and children's advocate. Howard also received recognition from Atlanta Neighborhood Planning Units, or NPUs, for his service to the community and for opening community prosecution offices. This award was, the, was recognition by four Atlanta neighborhood planning units. And what those planning units said is that those community prosecutors are doing a good job. And it was very important for me and our office to get that acknowledgement and recognition from the citizens themselves. 
There are nine community prosecution offices throughout the county. The offices were developed to get communities more involved in the criminal justice process. And still to come, education tops the agenda during a meeting with Brazilian officials. It's a part of our district by district coverage next. You're watching Bolton Today. An embassy official from Brazil lends his voice to a roundtable discussion about education and hundreds applaud a county commissioner for his leadership in government and public service. Here's this week's District by District coverage. We begin with Chairman John Eves as he welcomes the Deputy Chief of Mission from the U.S. Embassy in Brazil. The District 1 at-large commissioner hosted a working luncheon at the Fulton County Government Center for the Honorable Todd Chapman. As the men ate, they discussed trade, foreign and domestic investment, and educational and cultural opportunities between the county and the country of Brazil. Following the luncheon, the group participated in a roundtable discussion about education. They explored student exchange opportunities for the Brazil Science Without Borders and Brasilia Without Borders program. I think that, you know, Fulton County has a great opportunity in Brazil. There are educational opportunities in that many Brazilians would like to come to the United States to participate in, in the great educational institutions. The idea is to try to get specific, to have areas that we may want to prioritize so that Fulton County can cooperate with cities in Brazil beyond the cooperation that it has already been leading with Bahia. Back in May 2012, Chairman Eves signed a memorandum of understanding with Brazilian Governor Jacques Wagner from the state of Bahia the partnership promotes cooperation and joint initiatives in the areas of economic development, tourism, public health, education, arts, and justice. In District 5, women at the Harriet G. Darnell Senior Multipurpose Facility are seeing red. The members of the facility celebrated National Wear Red Day to bring awareness about the dangers of heart disease. According to the American Heart Association, heart disease, also known as cardiovascular disease, is the number one killer of women. And today's event provided us with an opportunity to bring awareness to uh, the fight against heart disease. I learned today about why exercise is so important. And there are different, various stages of exercise. You can do it slowly or you can do it fast, but it helps the body to be energized, to build up the strength in your muscles. So I learned that there are just so many ways that you can exercise on a daily basis. Health professionals say heart disease can be prevented, in some cases with physical activity and a healthy diet. And finally, District 7 Commissioner William Bill Edwards is the 2014 recipient of the Pinnacle Leadership Award in the area of government and public service. The South Fulton Commissioner was recognized for his 14 years of service on the Fulton County Board of Commissioners and his endless contributions to the community. It's a great opportunity for me, not just for me, but I shared this award with all of the citizens of unincorporated South Fulton, first in District 7, and to Fulton County at large, because without these citizens, I could not continue to do the work that I do. The awards banquet at the Renaissance Hotel near the airport was sponsored by the East Point College Park chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Thirteen other leaders from the South Fulton community were also honored for their service. And still to come, more women show off their colors to fight heart disease. That story when we come back. You're watching Bolton Today. Portions of the following segment are part of the Fulton County Common Ground Initiative. Common Ground, the county's comprehensive solution to the problem of health disparities in the community. All month long, Fulton health officials are spreading the word about heart disease. Now it started with National Wear Red Day to bring awareness about the disease to more women. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has the story. At the South Fulton Library celebration of National Wear Red Day, health experts shared some common misconceptions about heart disease. 
Some women having a heart attack think they have the flu. They have nausea, vomiting, epigastric discomfort. The American Heart Association says 64% of women who die suddenly of coronary heart disease have had no previous symptoms. So it's crucial for people to monitor their health conditions. Our blood pressure should always be uh, 120 over 80 or less. Um, we should also know our cholesterol numbers. We should know our family history. The women who attended the event said it reminded them how important it is to exercise at least 30 minutes every day. If at any point you do think you are having a heart attack, remember time is the enemy, so you need to get help as soon as you can. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Thank you very much, Lynn. Meanwhile, Fulton Health Professionals also promote a new FDA campaign aimed at young smokers. What's a pack of smokes cost? Your smooth skin. See you again. Medical director Dr. Matthew McKenna says 90% of people who smoke started before they were 18, so it's crucial to warn teens before they become addicted. Their brains begin to change. Their brains are, much, are not fully developed, and their brains change so that it leads to the addiction that later on in life they wake up one day and they're a 35 year old who can't stop smoking and is beginning to have COPD or emphysema or a heart attack. Dr. McKenna says 70% of teens think they will stop smoking in 10 years, but in reality, 75% are still smoking a decade later. Now if you or somebody you know needs help quitting, go to smokefreecoalition.net. And health professionals also have their focus on teen dating violence during the month of February. According to the CDC, too many young people are experiencing violence in their dating relationships. One in every 10 teenagers reports being hit or physically hurt by a boyfriend or girlfriend at least once in a 12 month period. Experts say the violence may begin as controlling or demanding behavior like telling someone what to wear or with whom to hang out. The county's medical director of behavioral health says teen dating violence can have grave consequences. This is a young person early in life who's learning how to date, how to interact with a loved one and learning about love. And if they become involved in, in a violent relationship, this is something that they can carry with them for the rest of their lives. Uh, so, and, and many times as we become adults, we see these same negative patterns repeated over and over again. So. Um, that's something that we really are concerned about and that's why early intervention and education is so important. For teaching your teen how to develop healthy, respectful relationships, get in touch with our Behavioral Health Division. It's at the New Oak Hill Child, Adolescent and Family Center. You can contact that information right there on your screen. And still to come, details of the renovation project at the Auburn Avenue Research Library. Stay with us. You're watching Fulton Today. Volunteers who love to read are needed at the Northeast Rural Oaks Library. The Atlanta Fulton Library System is recruiting volunteers who like books and like to work with children, teens, and adults. The volunteers are needed for one to two hours a week. Special training is required. We have a different orientation schedule and orientation process for young volunteers, which is the 12, the 13, and 14 year old, whereas the adult volunteers are 15 years of age or older. Residents who are interested should contact Karen Swenson by phone or email. The Northeast Sproul Oaks branch is located at 9560 Sproul Road in Johns Creek. An update now on a library renovation project. The Auburn Avenue Research Library on African American Culture and History is now back open. The library closed for a few days to prepare for a $25 million expansion project, but now that project is postponed. It's now expected to start in a few months, but an exact date has yet to be determined. The future renovations will include adding an auditorium that will seat 240 people. Of course, we will let you know when the closure will happen. 
And finally, a family trip that is easy on the wallet. Fulton Free Saturdays happens on the first Saturday of every month at the High Museum. All Fulton County residents can attend as a part of a partnership with the Fulton County Arts Council. Residents just need to bring a driver's license, utility bill, or a student ID from a Fulton County school. The great thing is that the High Museum has a partnership with the Fulton County Arts Council, and they sponsor visitors who live in Fulton County to be able to come to the museum for free on the first Saturday of the month. The next Fulton Free Saturday happens on March 1st. Feel free to visit the High Museum's website to check out new and upcoming exhibits. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to hear from you about the stories and programs right here on FGTV. Go to our website to take a survey or email or call us, the number 404-612-8317. The email address is fgtv.feedback at fultoncountyga.gov. You can also follow us on twitter.com slash FGTV, friend us on Facebook, and watch us on YouTube. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shawn Chavis. Thank you for joining us. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.